Welcome back to the Jacksonville History Show. What we'll talk about next is one of the most dramatic episodes in American history, yet it's one of the least talked about episodes. We hear about the Jamestown settlement. We hear certainly about the Pilgrims in Plymouth from the time we're in grade school. But the events we'll talk about today preceded those events, near, some by more than half a century, others by nearly a half a century. And I have uh, with me to talk about this episode two experts from Fort Caroline Memorial, uh, National Memorial, and uh, Craig Morris, who's the lead ranger at Fort Caroline, and I also have with me John Whitehurst, ranger at Fort Caroline, and, your, and the cultural resources director, That's specialist. Yes. And it's so good to have you with me. Okay. Now, Craig, I'm feeling a little underdressed when I look at you now. <laughs> um, the, the Fort Caroline ex experience is really all about the first French uh, colonization attempt in the in the Americas. In, in, well, in North America, North they do America. they do try a little bit earlier in South America, but it's um, it's a very feeble attempt. Uh, it's the first f French attempt by a group of colonists coming. It's the first attempt by any colonist coming to the New World with the object of seeking freedom, and I think that's it's it's very much most historical caveat, if you will, mm -hmm. is that prior to the coming of the Huguenots, anybody who had come to the New World came for riches, lands, and whatnot. Well, these Huguenots, being Protestants, were fleeing civil war in France, and so they came here with the idea of seeking a place of refuge. Well, seeking freedom was what founded our country. So I, I think that's a wonderful um, foreshadowing of America. And this was 1564 when the co a colonists came, and they had been preceded in a voyage by Jean Rabot, known to us in Jacksonville frequently as Rebault, Rebault High School, Rebault River, Jean Rabot. And, and he had come in 1562, made sure this would be a great place to, to, to settle, and then the colonists came back, the shiploads in 64. And tell us about your dress and, and how you would relate to the colonists of those well, days. Well, this is just a um, history from that time period. We don't have photographs. Um, we do luckily have the Lemoyne drawings, but this is what they would have dressed in. Um, very stocking-like pants, um, heavy doublets, that's this vest that I've got on. <laughs> the, this, this is their bullet cartridges. This belt called the Twelve Apostles is what they carried their um, cartridges that would have fired these very crude matchlock weapons. Um, this is a replica, firing replica of a matchlock musket. Um, simply predates the uh, flintlock. This burning piece of roach hits the touch pan and explodes the weapon. Very simple, but... Um, and, and when, so we have this establishment, uh, the colony is set up, it functions for 18 months, and then perhaps, John, you want to fill us in on what happens after the 18 months of these, of the French men and women seeking religious freedom in, here in North Florida, uh, only a few miles from where we sit now. Well, one of the things that we don't really think about is this colony and the conflict that develops is the first European land battle of, of, of two powers in the New World. There's a bloodbath, basically. A bloodbath, yeah. yes. Uh, because the Spanish consider the French to be heretics, of course, they, they, they come in to... Um, Pedro Menendez comes mm -hmm. over and sets out to destroy Fort Caroline and succeeds admirably oh. well. <laughs> Massacres not only the people at the fort, but the folks that escaped by going down the coast to attack him. So you, in, in essence, we have two massacres, one down at Matanzas and, of course, at Fort Caroline. And you know what I think we'll do? And, and because of this episode in, in or the early history, uh, what, what we have now is a memorial uh, at great. the site, or roughly where every where historians best think this site is, near the site of where all this occurred. And let's just take a look at uh, at a picture of uh, uh, the the space, the geographic space of Fort Caroline. And Craig, could you tell us a little bit about this? What well, you're seeing on the screen? Um, uh, up in the upper left hand corner, you can see the Fort Caroline property, uh, the largest section on basically the western 
end of St. John's Bluff. If you take that shoreline and make an L out of it, there's uh, the small part of the L being on the right-hand side. That's St. John's Bluff. It's the highest natural point on the St. John's River. And you can see the ocean from up there. And that's the landmark that we associate because the French claim to have built the fort within sight of this hill. And so that's the reason the park is there. We have about 139 acres that make up Fort Caroline Park as we know it today. Um, Rebo Monument is the small little piece of property. Um, and you can still see it from the ocean to the ocean from up there. And on, on that, it, it noted the uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt Preserve. And that was given in what year? Rob, anybody? We acquired 60s? it. Yeah, well, um, Willie Sorry. Brown, the man who donated right. it, um, gave it to the Nature Conservancy in 1969, a year before he passed away. And now it's the. Um, it's one, it was the first large piece of property acquired by the Timucuan Preserve, I believe, in 89. That's and, and of course, the man who made the, the preserve uh, was responsible for the, uh, Fort Caroline and the preserve. We would all have to, Congressman Bennett. And uh, his hand has been in Fort Caroline from the very beginning. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about the congressman later. Let's also take a look at what, what you know, if, if a family wants to come to your facility, which Jacksonville, Thank you. um, uh, who's not taken this excursion, you, you certainly should. This is, it's free, it's open daily, nine to five, I think, except Christmas Day and New Year's Day, perhaps? Uh, yes, we haven't, uh, we've always been closed on Christmas Day, but we're debating whether or not to close New Year's, so we haven't My decided goodness. that night. And, and, and it is, it's a wonderful, it's a, it's a safe panels, we have way signs that tell the Fort Caroline story going down to the fort itself. And a replica there of the fort right there. Um, we've just added a brand new dock, which has to do with our ecotourism initiative within the Timucuan Preserve and our partners. But you can go out on that dock and get incredible views. So, um, and our, our visitor center. That's correct. And John mm -hmm. is the curator of the artifacts in there. And we have some very quality pieces for such a... And this new dock you have, uh, actually soon you'll not only be using it for people's uh, boats to, to dock their very... Well, you won't see me coming on that, <laughs> but I do plan to, to get a little motorboat down there. Um, I have to ask, soon, and John, um, you or Craig, soon there will be actually a, a, a boat trip between the dock at Fort Caroline and Kingsley Plantation. Can you fill me in on that? What we're trying to do is we're setting up hopefully in the next year or so, setting up a concession tour where folks will be able to get on a boat, either downtown area, come up to Fort Caroline, take a tour of the area, move up to Kingsley Plantation, also tour that facility, and then back around. So it's going to be a nice circular boat tour that will also give us interpretation of the waterways and, and all the salt marsh areas as well as the two historic sites. And if we haven't enticed everyone enough, let's let's take one more look at a shot of Fort Caroline, which we have, should come up next. And here's that replica of the fort. You and I have talked about this, Craig. It's considered to be a replica of what size compared to the original fort? Well, some people, <laughs> I, I'll say it real quick, then I'll turn it over to John. I, I've always, when I got there in 86, um, they said two-thirds the original size. I've seen 300 kindergartners in that fort. There's no way it's two-thirds. It, to me, it's one-third the original size. So I'm going to turn over to the archaeologist. And I have to agree with Craig on that. We consider it to be about a one-third scale replica. Uh, we've just gotten done with some reconstruction of the fort area. So it's it's much nicer facility than it was before as an exhibit. And children really do love playing in the fort. and, and uh, you've just done some additional restoration work on the fort, and it really is quite a, quite a wonderful trip for a family and a wonderful learning experience about area history. Uh, getting back to the history of this fort, oh, here you go. Here's the cannon shot. Uh, the cannon. Tell us a little bit about this cannon, if you will. Uh, well, it's a French demi culverin. It's They brought it over here as a field artillery piece. Uh, it's a very heavy weapon. It would have fired an eight-pound ball uh, about a half a mile. Uh, certainly had the Spanish and the French battled under a, um, not in the middle of a storm, and the French had not sailed south and wrecked and 
the saga that hit, the French certainly would have had a big advantage. They were already entrenched, um, had a fort, and certainly they had many, many advantages. To me, that's just the, the maddening part of the story is the French have so many opportunities to do Menendez in, and they squander every one. Had it not been for opening the gate of the fort, perhaps it was, and then getting caught in a hurricane as they were fighting with the Spanish or racing from the Spanish. So there were these incidents that just you wouldn't expect ever to be repeated in history that did occur. And then for the next roughly 250 years, 200 or so years after this, we were under Spanish rule until we became a territory of the U.S. in 1821. And, and that fort became a Spanish fort after that and changed from the name Fort Caroline to... To San Mateo. Fort San Mateo. Uh, in fact, let's talk a little bit more of the history. It's so remarkable. We actually have drawings or sketches, they were even called paintings, done by one of the colonists after his return to Europe, Jacques Lemoyne. And we're going to run some of those. These actually, this one actually still exists. You're going to tell about this. This is the, the column that... Uh, yes. This is a column that Jean Rabot uh, left behind when he sailed on to uh, Charles Fort and established Charles Fort in um, South Carolina. This is also an example of Timucan Indians. And now we're on to the ships. These show the French ships, actually, and the Indians up on the riverbank, I believe, meeting and greeting the French. That's correct. And, uh, and it was just remarkable because the French and Indians, am I not, just for a period in time originally got along beautifully and were very friendly. Here you see, uh, gosh, this is another, a replica of the fort. Craig, do you have anything oh, to that, add to that? That was what we based the um, fort that we have now on. Um, but that's, you know, that's one of the great mysteries of Florida history is where is this fort? Um, mm -hmm. I, I give anything, I'm being a native of Jacksonville, I'm prejudiced, but I'd love for us to find it. Gators, now this is one of the, my favorite <laughs> shots. Believe it or not, they did get that large, and the Native Americans feared death from alligators more than they feared death from, their, uh, from people. So proportionately a man, and they were, in Tamuquin Indians were described as large, so this would be... Uh, you well, with the alligator was at the apex of the food chain, right? So, and so yeah. they grew huge in those days. What kind of footage you think on a gator? <laughs> well, John, probably about 16 feet or so. Wow! So it, it was. Well, this is such an exciting part of Jacksonville history. I want to invite you back again because the next time you come, I, uh, I'm hoping to have really uh, the man who made Fort Caroline possible with the two of you, and you've both been so devoted, but I'd like to have Congre the former Congressman Bennett here, and uh, we could meet with him, and, and he would be able, in fact, let me quickly show before we cut out here, uh, two of his books recently republished that you sell at Fort Caroline, yep. Three Voyages, and Laudonniere in Fort Caroline, and these two wonderful books are available at Fort Caroline, and people can just call. How do they best reach you to find out how to get there? How can that be done? Um, 641-7155. How do they look that up in the phone um, book? If they well, it's it? complicated. Um, in the they blue can... pages, we're under Department of Interior. Okay. And white pages, we're under Fort Caroline. So. Our call, the Jacksonville Historical Society, yes, will yes. give you the number. Uh, thanks so much for being with us again in uh, this segment of the Jacksonville History Show. Join us again.